Hello and welcome to the Southbound Sports Show. I'm your host, Richie Leahy, here with my co-host, Maddie B. For those on video, we have continued to upgrade our video, uh, I guess, basically live layout. So hopefully you like that. And if you don't have the video, make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube at Southbound Sports, where you can check it after we go live. We go live every Tuesday at 9 on Facebook, so you can check us out there as well. But we're going to kick off the show today with the NFL. And I feel like, Matt, we've been talking about running backs the past couple of weeks. Christian McCaffrey just signed the highest paid deal in running, for running back in NFL history at $64 million. What are your thoughts on that? I was really, really surprised by that, to be honest, because um, if you listen to the show, you know that running backs have a very limited shelf life, and there's just not a lot of value for running backs. Well, teams historically um, are finding success either undrafted free agents or late round draft picks, and they're able to make those those young players work. And it's a lot, it's a pretty big investment to make. Um, what are your thoughts? Well, we've said it all the time. When you put so much money into one player, it rarely works out. And it doesn't matter what position they play. I think we pointed out the quarterbacks going into the playoffs last year, how like none of the top 10 were even in the playoffs. And then you have running backs as well. But I think this is a little bit different. I think the Panthers realize that they aren't making the playoffs. They lost Luke Keekley. They lost Cam Newton. So they basically do not have an identity for the fans. Christian McCaffrey right now is probably the most visible Panther for the foreseeable future. So they're going to invest in him to try to get fans to turn out knowing that they're in a rebuild. They bring in Matt Roll from Baylor. He had great success there. They're hoping he can turn it around quickly to where they can have success. But in the meantime, if it doesn't, they're going to put all their money into this one player that's an up-and-comer. You know that he sells jerseys. You know that he's a fan favorite. They already lost their other fan favorites, so they're going to put all their money into him. And I don't think it's for winning purposes, to be honest. Uh, Do you agree with that? Um, I I think it depends on how old. Gould decides to use him. You know, when you look at if you're paying McCaffrey as a running back, it's a really if they're moving him around and using him as like a wide receiver type player, like almost like what Le'Veon Bell was trying to to advocate for himself for, saying that he was used in the passing game and he like with his pass catching ability, he felt like he should have been paid more along the lines of a wide receiver. I think that's where why McCaffrey got the deal that he did is because of his ability to catch passes out of the backfield as well as run the ball. So he's been used in a variety of things, and and I think that's where that contract comes into play that they signed him to that for. So I think if they continue to use him in that role, then it's going to justify um, that kind of salary. However, you know, like like we've said before. You pay, you pay that kind of money, it really handcuffs you unless you know going in that you're you're going to have a very limited amount of uh, you're going to have a lot of roster space like cap money because you're going to be paying a lot of younger players and getting away with with uh, league minimum salaries for a lot of your other players. And who knows, it might work out. I mean, you look at Gurley, he signed a monster contract, he gets cut, ends up with the Falcons. Did you see his comment about Deion Sanders? No. He, uh, I guess he asked for permission to wear 21 and he decided to wear it anyway. And Deion Sanders basically told him no, (laughs) which if I'm, if I'm honest, like I wouldn't even think of Deion Sanders with the Falcons. I mean, I think Cowboys and then I think 49ers, I think that's the teams where he had the most success winning wise. I don't think of the Falcons, let alone for him to tell someone not to wear his number. So I thought it was funny that Gurley just basically told him, yeah, okay, I was asking kind of just for the publicity thing, not for honest truth. 
Well, and I think that just kind of shows that he doesn't really know Dion that well because Dion is first and foremost about Dion. So had he have asked, there was no way that he was going to let him give that number up. Yeah, I think it's better that he did ask, though, because then Dion just looks like a douchebag. And, I mean, Falcon fans are probably thinking, oh, Dion, what did he win here? Not a good look. I mean, if it was the Cowboys, I could see. But anyone else, like, no, that's not your. That's not who people associate you with. What are you doing? It'd be like Joe Montana telling, like, Chiefs players not to wear his jersey. No one realizes that he played for the Chiefs, most likely. Unless you lived through, through that era, most young kids do not know that. Until the Super Bowl, when they played it up this year. But uh, Do you have any other NFL news? No. I mean, to me, the only other thing is that it still seems like they're going to try to move forward with the NFL draft, that they were, they were doing some uh, testing just to see if the owners and people were able to, to get all of the remote, the different like remote locations to all work together. Did you they see any, Did you see anything about the the IT guys? No, I didn't. One of the things, and I don't know how true this is, they are saying that they are having issues because the owners didn't want people from like their IT departments like going into their houses to set up for this, and so that was one of the sticking points was that they were thinking they were going to need to have some different equipment to make sure everything's working properly. But they they weren't comfortable having like IT people come to their house and check out their equipment. To be honest, that sounds believable, and they would be probably be the first ones to complain when things didn't work right. Like, yeah, what did you do wrong? And then the guys like, yeah, you didn't let me in the house. Or, I mean, to be honest, like what else could happen is you don't set up like a secure network. Some random guy in your neighborhood just knows where you live and he goes, sits outside, gets on your Wi-Fi, tries to hack into your computer and then gets your draft list before the day, which would be a hilarious leak. So if you're listening to the show, I didn't tell you to go do it, but if you put it out there, I, I would think it was funny because <laughs> you have these guys that are stuck. They probably didn't even use email. I think they said Nick Saban just came out and said that he finally started to use email. I was like, why? Why weren't you using it? That's like the easiest way to have someone blast a bunch of recruits and stuff. Like you, you can have an assistant handle it where you don't actually have to sign in or read it. Or hell, you don't even have to put it on your phone or anything. A lot of people don't realize that. You can set up an email address and never check it. Like and just use it for marketing. <laughs> So I'm not sure I'm sure Alabama gave him one, but this kind of reads the same way. It's like these guys don't understand the technology and the NFL is going to try to do it as securely as possible because uh, there are going to be hiccups. Look at what the ESPN did with that. I don't know if you saw any of them. It was the horse game. Did we talk about it last week? They're trying to replace their broadcasting for the playoffs that they normally show with some basketball. And so they went out and got I don't know if they were just NBA stars because I only watched a part of the one and it was a a basketball player against a WNBA player. But their video was so bad, Matt, because they don't they didn't have anyone set it up. So it was like two crappy cell phones and they were trying to do it live. So it just looked horrendous. So if they don't have the IT guys come in and set up like quality gear, it's gonna look bad. And I mean, it took a, like, go back and look at some of our earlier videos, even whenever we make transitions, like it's tough to get everything to work. And we've been doing it for a while now. Imagine if you're doing it as a one-off, there are no redos. I know we do our show live, but a lot of podcasts, they don't. So they can just redo and mess around and try to get the video right and right and right. And sometimes we, we delay too, depending on the setup and things like that. But honestly, you just have to go with it. And with the NFL draft, it's such a big event that if they make mistakes, it's going to be noticeable. Especially because you're sitting there for how many days? It's three days, right? 
Yeah. Or do they go into Sunday? I don't remember remember when it. I think it ends like th- Saturday afternoon, right? Like around five or six. But well, it used to be where they did the first round Friday, and then it was Saturday Sunday. Well, now it's Thursday is the first round. Is it two through three or two through four on Friday? And then they do Saturday, the rest, they kick off like around noon. And that's the rapid fire one. Because yeah. I remember I usually what I do is I try to do spring cleaning like outdoor stuff and just have it on my phone nowadays. Because like you don't really need to see. They don't have highlights for those guys that get taken in the later rounds most likely. So they're just kind of given like their stats and stuff. So that's good radio. That's a good weekend to plan. Hopefully, if you, it's good weather, that's a pro tip for you. Plan some yard work around and then just put your phone and throw some headphones in and then no one will bother you. They think you're listening to music or something and you get no interruptions. You can just get football the whole time because this, this is the last shot. Let's be honest. I've been waiting for them to delay it. I don't think they're going to delay it because they're going to try to do it remotely. I saw one guy, was it a scout or a GM for one of the teams? He was like posting videos and doing a dry run already of his office, what it's going to look like. He had a couple phones lined up, had like a ton of like a uh, notebook, paper, and all kind yeah. of notes. And then he had whiteboards up on the wall, kind of like his de facto draft board. But, I mean, a lot of those guys, you would have to think that they're going to have assistants that aren't there. And so the assistants can do the work, and then they're going to be trying to show, like, the video to the GM or vice versa. Like, it's going to be tougher than what people imagine because you're not going to just be able to have some assistant scribble down some notes and hand it to you when you're down between the last two guys. They're going to have to try to do it through video chat or on the phone. And you're not going to have that other visual aspect that a lot of them have. So we'll see what happens. I mean, I'm excited for it. I hope they don't push it back. The NBA and the NHL, I think, have both pushed theirs back. I think the NBA came out and said that their CBA doesn't allow them to return until at the earliest July 1st. So even if they were trying to do a quick NBA playoffs like I had said, a one-game elimination tournament until the finals and then do a seven-game finals. Which, I mean, hell, baseball does something similar. Do like a two-game series, a three-game series, best of three, best of three, best of three, and then a best of seven. Like, just keep increasing it by round or whatever you decide to do. You don't have to play seven games. No one cares or watches. There's no excitement. There's rarely any upsets in that first round. Because no eight seed can really take down a one seed. And even if they do, they usually get pasted in the next round. I don't have stats on me to back that up, but I'm pretty sure that's what happens. So you can look it up. I don't think an eight seed has ever won the NBA playoffs. I don't even know what the lowest would be, but it's not like an NHL where that eight seed can make a push. Or hell, even like when the Steelers were the wild card and they won the Super Bowl. It's, it's a different beast. So NHL is still looking. I was going to put that into my high tempo, but they're looking into that, so we'll get into that in a little bit. Let's keep going with football. Uh, The XFL files for bankruptcy, and this is big news because they suspended operations, and it had come out almost, was it like a day before they did? They had announced that they were going to keep playing, and they were actually in talks, it came out today, that they were looking at next year already. And they had been in talks with a couple of different cities either to, I don't think it was going to be to expand, which is what I was against because I liked the eight team schedule and playoff bracket, everything like lined up. You had half the, half the teams make the playoffs, things like that. You didn't have any scheduling issues. So it looked like they were going to move some of the teams to possibly San Antonio was one of the locations of things like that. So it wasn't like they were giving up. And I wonder if these bankruptcy uh, filing uh, paperwork stuff was to just get some of the payroll off the books. They had owed, I think, I don't have an exact number, but they owed a couple million, I want to say a couple hundred million dollars to the University of Houston because they were leasing their 
I mean, their stadium. But of course, when you're not having the games, they're not making the gate. They're not going to be able to pay that. And so by filing bankruptcy, you kind of get out of that contract. And I think that's what they're trying to do here. So I don't want to give hope, false hope to people that think, oh, XFL is going to be back next year. Because a couple of insiders said that they are coming back. And a couple of people involved with the XFL said that they aren't. They said that they were told that they were done and to not expect a job next year. But like, I wonder if because of the way this ended, you, they're just going to tell people that because they're telling the people that work at the stadium, they're telling the front office guys, maybe the web designer, things like that, where they can go out and actually get another job. So it's almost like they're telling them like, Hey, don't wait around for us to return. We might not return. Go look for other jobs. Meanwhile, they're telling the football focused guys like Oliver Luck. I haven't seen a statement from him yet. They're not coming out and saying that it's over. It's only the office folk. And but you know, the thing that I, that I find so shady in all this is that when, when we talked about the frustrating thing with the AAF was that they didn't have the money to pay out their contracts and cover all their stuff. And the XFL, like in the when they when they saw the AAF had folded, had made comments about making about having enough funds that they were going to be able to support the league for a couple seasons. And that was one of the things, one of the reasons why I was high on it was that it was going to give you that opportunity to be able to let the league grow, and you were going to have these these growing pains where. Like what you what you saw at the end of the season is there's a pile of players and Pittsburgh's been one of the the bigger teams that have picked up XFL players that they're getting a chance to to basically audition for the NFL and then and now you're seeing that there's a there's a lot of players that are getting invitations and signing contracts to go to camp and to to have a, an opportunity to play in the NFL so I think like there is some merit to the league. But it's frustrating because now they're they're going the bankruptcy route, which is kind of showing some weaknesses in terms of uh, sustainability for the league. Well, I think you're probably misinterpreting what they meant by they have a fully funded three year. I think that's from the overhead costs, and I want to say that that's probably still in pe- in play. I think the bankruptcy is only for this season is what I'm thinking. Like they're, they didn't have money to pay for stadiums. They were going to use the gate. They probably had a deal with the university of Houston where they said, okay, typically we average this many people. So-and-so other stadiums average this, or like they could have looked at the AAF last year and said, they average this, you're charging this. We want a certain percentage of that. And so they have to declare bankruptcy to get out of that contract because they're saying like, look, we didn't get that money. We're not going to get out of the gate. If the ownership, they still own the overhead, they can still go ahead and try to reboot it with another round of funding or whatever they they say that they're going to do. I also worry though that with the WWE taking a hit, that's where a lot of that other funding was coming from. So it's not like he he's going to lose stocks in two different ventures. I think I saw, and this might not be accurate because things change so quick, but I think I saw that Florida had ruled that the WWE was essential and they were able to at least continue with events in Florida. And I mean, that's big for television contracts where they could put on these events. You just need a place to put them on. And so with that, I think if things stabilize or like I said, if the WWE, they make up their money from what they missed. I mean, WrestleMania, isn't that around April? I don't know the exact date. I don't know if that got canceled or what, but that's a gigantic event where he can't lose money on that and the XFL. I think if being the only game in town right now, there's not a lot of competitive things on. Like I said, they were just showing horse that people were just recording on their phone. It wasn't a good product. It wasn't like they had a ca- camera guy with a stabilizer. It looked like a bunch of people making YouTube vids. 
like honestly, in all honesty, it wasn't good content for ESPN. So if they could, if WWE can put together some professional video events, I mean, people would watch that because what else are they watching? You're watching people play horse, Matt. You could take your kid outside and play horse and not watch someone else do it. Like there, just go out and do that yourself. It's kind of like why you don't see other events as big of things that you can do yourself just because it's not exciting. So let's go. Let's see what happens. I want to see if WWE can come back early because some of the early readings are that large scale sporting events might not get the okay to come back until the end of the year or worse. I'm hoping that it's wrong. But that's the latest that I saw today, uh, Tuesday, whatever the date is, the 14th when we were recording this, if you listen to it late. So things might change because it's changing so fast. But it's going to be tough to do events with fans. If they can do it without them, like baseball's been talking about going, and it's part of my high tempo. They're talking about going into Arizona. I think we talked about it last, last week and trying to put everyone in a venue. And uh, we can even transition to high tempo. The NHL now is looking at bids. They were trying to get bids. I don't know how far it went. Where they were getting bids from cities out in the Midwest, uh, Wyoming or North Dakota or South Dakota. One of them, they have a complex where they play hockey and they have four or five rings. Not to do a full season, but like I had said, what the NBA should do just to try to get the playoffs in. Because I think it's a lot easier... Baseball, you're trying to get 30 teams and all of their players and all of their staff. And then I read something where they were trying to get people to leave their families, Matt, because if they go to play baseball and they have the hotel workers, the food was one of the things that I had brought up and Major League Baseball said that they would have it brought in. Okay, well, you're still going to have that trade off. You're still going to have to have hotel workers. Are they going to get to go home? And they were saying no. So how many months are you going to play baseball where these people aren't going to see their families? Like, how are you going to afford that? I know you're losing so much money, so it might be worth it to save. Like, all the money you're saving travel-wise, you can put into paying these people extra. But where are you going to find people willing to do that? Put themselves at risk to do all that. And, like I said, are you testing? Because their initial plan said that they weren't testing. What are most Americans, what what are the majority of Americans doing? They're just sitting at home in quarantine. I, so if you I, have, then, I mean, where you can't work versus going to to a job where you're going to not only get paid, but also um, maybe have a chance to work with some celebrities. There you go. There's, there's your opportunity. Actually, you probably just brought some good ideas out for people that are just graduating college. Well, who's going to hire them right now? It's basically like a free vacation if you're single. I mean, you're young, you're single. What are you going to do? Go out, live with a bunch of players. I mean, what else are they going to do? They're not going to be doing anything. So maybe they could get it to work out. I mean, NHL, they're looking at doing it, like I said, just with the playoff teams, maybe an abbreviated schedule, but kind of doing it like a tournament where you're playing just triple headers or quadruple headers or whatever the hell it would be called where you're doing games back to back to back. So you have all the venue staff, they're doing it. I would imagine you'd need different refs on the ice just because of skating back and forth. They're not going to be able to do four games in a row. But over time, the games lessen and lessen because teams are getting eliminated. So it could work. For baseball, I just don't know how sustainable that's going to be. And if you're testing all these people, are you testing them? How often are you testing them? Because at first, they said that they would test them or quarantine them for 14 days before they would start. But, okay. I mean, it still could be dormant in someone's system. They really don't know. And then it could spread to everybody, and then you're kind of screwed. So, uh, as much as I want to see, that's my high tempo. Hockey's trying to get it done. WWE is looking like they're trying to get events. It's a little bit easier because, I mean, their events are staged. So they could even just pump fake crowd noise in, keep the cameras tight. You would never know. So, I mean, they held, they could fill it up with like 
a hundred of their friends, not even a hundred. They could just get like 20 of their friends on one side of the ring and just only shoot from the other side. So it looked like the stadium was packed. Problem solved. But uh, what do you got? You got anything on that? Well, I just think an angle that they could do with that is almost treat it like, you know, you've talked about pod systems with the XFL and different things like that. If they wanted to try to do that baseball wide, that might be a way to do that where they just have they're, they're playing within a pod of so many games, and then from that group you go on to the next group. So that, like you're still playing like your division games, and then expanding out into you know the rest of the conference, so that you're still getting something out of that, and it turns into a league wide playoff. And you know that you're only doing this for a limited amount of time. To me, the big scare is that. The longer that that they drag this out, how do you transition back to some kind of normal routine? You know, I feel like if they drag this out over summer, and not that not that I'm saying be throwing caution to the wind or to, to not do things in a safe way, but I feel like with with a lot of people, it seems like are taking the quarantine seriously. That as they start to reopen things, having that understanding of we just were in this situation. Like you can't, even if they were to completely open everything back up, like it's still in your best interest to um, use common sense as far as like social distancing and things like that. That I would, I'd like to see things start to open back up so that we can get back into a routine come the start of the next school year. So that we get back into some kind of regular thing, because I think if they if they have things pushed back, it's gonna off, it's gonna cause a lot of problems with potential with the rumors of potentially moving college football to the spring. That maybe that's why the XFL is doing shutting or declaring bankruptcy because understanding that if NCAA pushes for a spring college football season, there's no way that that their league would be able to to handle competing with that. And that's a good point. That could be playing a part of their uh, decision making. And I had said that they might even split the NFL. So if they do half and half, that eliminates the XFL right there anyway, because they're not going to want to go head to head. And I think the bankruptcy thing just gives them a little bit of a cushion for when they want to come back. There, there's no debt going in. Where if they rush back or they never declared it, you would still have to pay the University of Houston. I'm sure there's other contracts. That's the one that I have as a solid example to bring up on the show. I mean, who knows how many other contracts that are out there that they can't fulfill because they didn't get to play the games. And it's not their fault. And I would hope that the university and the other stadiums that they had leased out, they understand that. It's business. It's not their fault that they didn't get to play. They were trying to play it. They were one of the last leagues to cancel. So it's not like they ran out and were the first ones just trying to get out of Dodge. So there's that. Uh, I like your pod system idea. It's almost like how spring training is held anyway, because you have half the teams in Florida and half in Arizona. And to be fair, you could probably split it three or four ways. I mean, depending on how many teams there are, I think there is there still 30. Just put 10 teams in each location and do three locations and split it up so that you're not playing your regional teams. Because like you said, when you return to normalcy, you don't want teams flying across the country. So the easiest way would be to try to mix and match where you're not playing any teams, and I'm sure you're going to have one, maybe two. I'm trying to think of the number in my head. But try to play the teams that aren't closest to you. Because when you get back, a, let's say after middle of July or whenever you decide to get back, then you can just play your closest rivals three or four series just to end out the season. So like the Pirates would end up playing the Reds, the Indians, maybe uh, the Orioles, someone in there. I, I don't know because like you're, even the Cardinals, that's a pretty far run for them. So maybe the Pirates and Cardinals match up and they're going to be in one, I guess, quarantined division. And then they're going to play teams from across the country like a team from L.A., maybe another team out west or whatever. And you're just going to play those nine teams 
that are in the division with you and you play a four game series that's 36 games play one series against each of them i mean if you do have a team from your division you might play them two or three times while you're there depending on how long you want to do it that could kick you up to 48 games or so and so there you're already done with like a half of a shortened season you come back home you only play teams directly in your region so the travel's limited that way you're not putting your team in your city at risk by flying to, oh, yeah, we went up to Seattle where it started and then they all came back to Pittsburgh and the whole team had it again because things opened up too quick or something. So they need a plan. And to me, that would make perfect sense if they went that route because like the hockey is totally different because they're at the end of their season. So when their playoffs would wrap up in this quarantine zone, they go home. And they wait to see what happens next year. And so baseball's in like a totally different, I mean, well, I I don't even know what they could call it, but they're going to be the trendsetter to see what happens. If they don't come back, football doesn't come back. That's the truth. They already pushed the Olympics back a year. Football's not going to be the ones to be like, you know what, baseball couldn't do it. And they had a, a regional system that they couldn't get worked out. But football gets double, triple the attendance of baseball. So, um, do you have anything else for high tempo before we get into? No. Because I know you want to talk about it, and it kind of ties in with this. Uh, we had some research done. Uh, where did this even come from? I thought they had the name on it. Of course, when people make graphics, you would think that they would put their logo on it. So, I'll try to see if I still have the original tweet that we got this from. Um, but basically, I think it was from ESPN. Is it Ross Dellinger? Uh, Adam Rittenberg? I think they were uh, going back and forth on it. But they were looking at how power, how football supports the Power 5 com- uh, conference athletic departments. And so for the people at home, or people listening on the podcast, I guess, and not watching the video, it basically it breaks down where football brings in most of the revenue. And to be honest, if I'm looking at the graphic, I'm not 100% into it because they break out football and basketball. But there are some other sports for certain schools where, let's say women ba- women's basketball, they bring in a profit. Or they do this or that, or hockey brings in a profit. Like I know Penn State brings in a profit for hockey and a couple other sports. But they lumped all of them in into a negative. And so... You're looking at the Big Ten right now. They have the biggest discrepancy where in football and basketball, every school made an average of $42 million, but they also lost $22 million. And I'm just rounding them both down. But, I mean, that's a crazy difference. And I talked to you before off the show, Matt, that I wonder if it has to do with the Big Ten and the SEC – and some of these other conferences, like I know the Pac-12, their differences aren't as big in the losses, but they also play a ton of sports, like Stanford and them. I wonder if just having more sports leads to more losses. And an offset of this is going to be where if you cancel football, schools are going to start to look at their budget and say, you know what? We don't need 14 sports. We can cut down to 9, 10. And I know I just did a pick because we normally talk about Florida State and uh, some of the Big Ten schools on here. But Florida State had, from my count, was it 11 men's mat and nine or 11 women's and nine's men's? Because I think the rule is you have to have women more or or equal. So uh, that's only 20 sports where Michigan, looking at it, they had 15 and 14. So they had 29, which is almost like 30. That's almost a 10. That's 33% more, basically. So, of course, you're going to have a bigger loss in terms of having more sports with more travel and then even some of the more idiotic arrangements where Arizona State's now in the Big Ten for hockey. I don't know how Arizona State is going to pull a profit in hockey when all of their games are going to be traveled to the Midwest. There's just no logical sense to it. You're hoping the TV money offsets it. They don't even show the games on TV anymore. 
when I think you hit the nail on the head with this, that it's when, when you're looking at the at the losses, they're looking at the losses as a conference. So when you have some of these these programs that they're not the traditional ones, like for example, like some rest programs, I'm sure are generating money because of of the the level of notoriety within their programs or some of these other sports in one specific school may may generate a, a profit but collectively across the the entire conference i'm sure that that it has to offset where you're having the majority of these other athletic programs are are costing the university money because of travel because of apparel because of all of the other things that go into it and that's where we talked about was it trampoline and a couple other sports that were coming in you might as well just cut them why are you trying to add these other sports because no one cares about the championships you win on them i mean there are some schools like i want to say does ohio state have a men's volleyball team I don't think Michigan does, but there are some conference sports that are just not conference sports. Some teams have them, but they don't play in the Big Ten. So I wonder if teams are going to look at those sports and just say, you know what? That's it. Let's cut them. I mean, the school conference could come together and say, you know what? Uh, we're going to stop. Like, don't don't play other sports. Only play the ones that are sanctioned by the league. And because otherwise, if there's a crisis like this again. Don't come to the conference asking for more money next time or don't do this or that because I wonder if that's where this is going to go because you're going to have these TV network deals that they had signed that were major deals. Now they're not fulfilling them. What's going to happen next negotiation? Are networks going to find that while they're broadcasting horse and other things, are they going to keep like if you find something that you can broadcast for zero dollars, let's say a couple of people playing cornhole or something and you're able to get close to viewership of what football was getting like you're done. You're, they're not going to pay for you to do that. That's what I worried about. Like the NBA when they were trying to do all these other things, like even the video game thing, video game gets pretty good streaming numbers depending on what people are playing. So if more people started to watch video game basketball than real basketball, why would they ever make a deal with the NBA? So it's a very fine line of what they decide that they need to do. But I mean, in terms of it, like the Pac-12, I was surprised to see that they are still bringing in a profit based on their football numbers because everyone has been talking about how doom and gloom they are just because of things falling apart for them. But they had $20 million in football they only made a million in basketball, which surprised me, 1.6. But they only lost 15, if I'm rounding it up a little bit. Um, so it's crazy that football can offset all of that. And the Pac-12, I would think, has some of the lowest travel in the country now. I mean, it used to be the Big Ten until they added Nebraska and Penn State and Maryland and Rutgers. But the Pac-12 has to be – I mean, I know they added Colorado – it's kind of out of the way, but a lot of them are so close that I think the travel would offset just by how many teams are in California and things like that. Almost like the big 12 with Texas till they added West Virginia. But if football lost money, I don't know what they would do. Even basketball loses money for some schools because like you said, if they're not traditional power, people aren't coming to see them. I mean, you can just watch games. I mean, even like some of the ACC schools, the ACC had the least amount of money in football because if you watch their games, no one's there. That's why the ACC is only always showing Clemson and Florida State and Virginia Tech in their ads. Maybe some NC State in there because no one else fills the stadium. Like, where are you going to get a great shot of Duke or hell, even UNC football? Their stadium's half empty. It's going to just be embarrassing. It would be almost like instead of showing the big house or Happy Valley or the, we'll just not even name them, but the Big Ten decides to show Northwestern. Like it's not going to give you the same numbers or hell, Maryland, even worse, Rutgers. Like you're, you're not going to get that same type of appeal in an ad. You're going to show the big dogs. So I don't know. Anything else you want to get on this? 
No, I mean, I, when, when I saw it at first, it didn't surprise me, but I think a lot of people have to, and I am biased because being a football coach, but I think you got to understand that that's what generates the most money. And that's one of the reasons why I think I would be very surprised to see people not have a football season because of how much money football generates. And when you're looking at funding whole athletic programs, if they're not getting that money to fund the rest of their programs, then where are they going to get that money from? If they don't have a strong booster system in place to help cover those, those financial losses, are they going to be looking to the government for additional funds to try to cover those losses? Because I would assume that, that that would not be something that they would be interested in in doing to try to cover entire universities' uh, athletic scholarship or uh, athletic funding. I wonder how many of them dip into the endowment. Because isn't the whole purpose of the endowment to help pay for events like this and student scholarships and things like that? But if you're taking a massive hit, does every program have enough to keep themselves afloat. And that's probably true. A lot of them probably don't. If you go back and look at how the last big stock market crashed, and I know the stock market didn't really crash yet, but if it crashed like it did in 2008, that's when a lot of universities started to get hurt. And that's when they decided to like cut a lot of programs like this. And that's what I wonder if that's what's going to happen. Or on the plus side, maybe a lot of them will start offering more online only programs which will increase their enrollment and help them get more revenue and they might not see a hit because that that's something that I'm looking at that I think will happen because a lot of these bigger schools they have tons of population that come on campus but they really haven't offered online only classes only like certain programs and on a trial basis and with a lot of stipulation, but this is kind of forcing their hand where a lot of degrees like technology and stuff like that, that can be done remotely. Why not? Why not do it in the future? You're going to be able to recruit a lot of uh, great students that maybe they're going to try to go into business for themselves, but hell, while they're at it, why not try to get a degree when they're not going to go on campus to do it? So we'll see if this makes a shift. And I wonder what's going to make it for other athletes and things like that. But uh, anything else you got? Nope. I, I only have one other thing for the final bell. I put this on uh, the docket, though, because let's be honest, there's there hasn't been any sports on TV. So I've been pretty bored. So Matt, with that stimulus check stuff coming down, I decided to go out and get an Xbox and I finally got Madden for the first time in, was it five years, four years? Uh, the last Madden I had was 2016 on the PS4. And let's just say I jump into the game and I decide, oh, they still have that ultimate team thing. I hate that. We've talked about it before. You try to just get cards and it's random. But Madden, it's like a trial they give you. If you buy the Xbox, it was like the EA bundle or something, they give you a free month of all of their games, which includes the latest Madden. So if you're looking for something to jump on, you can get it included. And then I think it's only $30 a year, which is a crazy deal for like something called the EA Vault. Uh, they don't have the newest games in yet until the playoffs start, from what I've read. So the new NHL isn't on there yet, even though it was supposed to be released maybe now, but no word on it because there's no playoffs. So... I'm hoping that gets added too, but I get into Madden. Face of the franchise, Matt. They call it QB1 this year, even though you used to be able to pick any position you wanted. I didn't see that option. So I was disappointed off the bat because normally I, I'm like a running back or someone else because I like playing just the abbreviated games because it's quick. You can jump in and play any time because it simulates through every other snap. As a quarterback, you're on the field for every play. Like, you can't just be the third down running back where you play like seven plays and then it gets to the next game. And then you can play a 20 year career in a couple hours. Like, now you're playing every offensive snap or let you sim it, but your guy sucks when he first comes in the league. So, of course, you're not going to do that. 
I cranked up the difficulty, Matt. Max. They, there's no like all pro or Heisman or I guess Heisman was NCAA. Uh, but what it used to be, it's called like challenging mode or something now. And what was the other one? Or competitive and something else. And I get into QB1. They start off at, at college level. They only give you a certain amount of teams to pick from. And I don't know how every college didn't try to get, on, get in on this agreement because it is free publicity. They jump you into the game right at the, what, the college football playoffs. And for those that don't care about this, you can end the show. It's over. We'll get back to you next week. But <laughs> there's not anything else going on. And I, I tried to do research on this mode. No one else talked about it. So I figured, what the hell? Give us some content for the show. I hop in, and you're right in the playoffs. I picked Texas Tech because I figured they would have the weakest team. And I probably am right, but it's not what I expected at all. It was almost like a movie, Matt. They have full ESPN shows, and I don't know if it was the legit cast for the show or not, but they talk about your player, and you have to pick like how you would respond when they ask you questions. Like He says, like, what... What was the negative from today? You're like, oh, I could, I had trouble reading the defense or whatever. And then it either gives you negative or positive stats based on if your coach likes you. And they added in other real non-football events. Like I played the first game. I forget who I played, Oregon or someone. And playing on hard mode, I thought it would be a lot harder than what it was because in the college level, I just toasted them. I would imagine if I was playing on rookie or whatever the lowest was, I would have scored 10 touchdowns. I had five touchdowns and I ran for another one as a quarterback. I picked scrambler, but in college, the difficulty is so easy. It's a joke. So some people were complaining online about losing. That's what all my research was. I could only find people complaining that if you lost the franchise, I guess your team, your guy really sucked when he got into the league. Don't lose in college. That's the easiest I ever played. There's a girl that comes up to you after the game. And I don't know if this is, happens to everybody, but they said that she had cancer and they gave you this whole cancer backstory and it was just uncomfortable. Like I'm playing a game here. What are you doing? Why is this in the game? And she asked me to throw four touchdowns. So of course I had to do it, Matt. I had to throw the four <laughs> touchdowns in the national championship <laughs> game and give my that. five touchdowns. I ran for the fifth and we blew out Florida. That, that's who the champ was. Even better. So um, I played that and another annoying feature, they had a receiver on my team. His brother had died. So there's a whole other story that they show you, like all this backstory. And he nags you the entire game. I throw a touchdown. I come to the sideline. He says, yo, you should have threw it to me. I was open. He's like, don't you remember my brother? Things like that. I was like, what the hell? What am I doing? What? Why is this in the game, Matt? I have no words. So I'm going to be updating you on my progress through. I played through. I won the national championship. Like I said, very easy. Racked up stats. Uh, I like I haven't played Madden for a while, but they used to do the workout like training camp modes, where like they would show you the play, and then they give you the spot, and you have to throw the ball and hit the spot. That's how you get stat boosts now, and it's very similar to what they used to do. So of course I've been killing it at that, getting a bunch of golds, and my guy stats are through the roof. But my first preseason game in the NFL, the difficulty was like five times college i couldn't do anything to haven't thrown for a touchdown yet i'm only in the preseason but it's it's a lot harder so for people that lost in the college game how are you playing in the nfl level <laughs> because i think they did it on purpose they wanted you to realize like oh the difficulty is so much higher in the nfl that you can destroy it in college and come up here you're not going to be good so that's where i'm at with it I didn't mind it. Um, I put on for the video people when I picked the Steelers as my favorite team. They gave me this graphic of, of TJ Watt, but over over top of him it says wide receiver nineteen, Juju Smith Schuster. So if you're on the video, you can see that picture. I thought, oh my god, this is exactly what I haven't bought Madden for. You can't get the simplest detail right. You put this whole story in about these weird personal things that have nothing to do with football into the game that I'm supposed to be playing, Matt, to pretend like I'm a player. Not well, like you I'm... Know these players are dealing with right now, so <laughs> you, you're already invested. They got you. 
players nagging you about throwing the ball, texting you when you get to the league. P O A B. <laughs> you're you're just living the story. Probably true. The coach didn't like you, and then after I won the national championship, he was telling all the scouts how I'm the best quarterback you ever had. Because that's the part of the story, Matt. Is that you were a five star recruit, so you're supposed to have insane growth in Madden as like a stat boost, but you were beat out by another quarterback. And so you only got to play in the playoffs because that guy got hurt. So almost like Cardell Jones, real life story, except now he's in the XFL. So I really hope my NFL career turns out better. <laughs> well, the way it sounds like it started, it sounds like you're Ryan Leaf. Oh, I got drafted by the Broncos. I don't know if I mentioned that, which I, I, I don't even like the Broncos. So that was a bummer. The giant, Matt, the giants were after me hard. In the pre-draft, I must have answered their questions wrong because I thought, perfect. I can follow Hall of Fame quarterback Eli Manning. I can just jump <laughs> jump right in. <laughs> You're such an idiot. It would have been perfect. It said the Broncos nabbed me early. So that was depressing. If they don't give me some help, I'm going to ask for a trade. I wonder if the Giants will trade for me. That's the Eli move. It, didn't, it said I couldn't ask for a trade until my first offseason. I tried. I tried to pull the Eli. I said, what happened to the Giants? They were looking at me. <laughs> I got anything else. Have you played Madden lately? I have. Which but year? Tip- but Yes. But typically I get hung up on fantasy draft. Just trying to build, build the Steelers. I haven't got that far. My goal is to play through QB1. Oh, I did some of the ultimate mode things, but it was kind of just like they kept trying to get you to open packs and then buy new packs, and I'm not into that because, like, what am I doing with my life if I'm just sitting there opening fake packs of cards? I don't see the appeal. Uh, But getting into QB1, my goal is to just play through one time. My guy could have the worst NFL career and I can get fired after one season. I'm fine with that. That's why I put it on max difficulty, Matt. Because I want to see what it was like for my man, Tim Tebow. Which I'm also left-handed, so I put my quarterback as left-handed. And I will say all the workouts are rigged against you. Because I know that they're set up, like the routes are set up, where you're a right-handed quarterback. And you can't flip anything. So, that's another knock on the game. You let me be left-handed, but you really don't let me be. Uh, Anything you got for the final bell? Nope. Just check out our website. We're we're continuing to make upgrades and doing some good things. And if you want to be a part, email us. Let us know on social media. We'll gladly have you on. I know you're not doing anything right now. Come on board. Yeah, very true. We we talked about trying to get some people to interview come on, but things are so crazy now that it's tough to get people's schedules worked out because everyone's working from home and working weird schedules. So. If you want to come on, definitely get a hold of us. Go to southboundsports.com. I think we have a contact us. If not, I'll add it in because I've been making work uh, work on the site to try to get our updated NCAA bracket on because we're wrapping up, or we already wrapped up the first round of our March Madness 2006 video game sim, which, if that goes well, my next plan is to just do some Madden live streams over the summer. So you can actually watch me play and see how good I actually am. Or from garbage. You can see me get four touchdowns and make one little girl's dream. Because that's exactly what happened. So, that's all we have. Short show. I know, I wish there was more sports to talk about, but there's not. So, thanks for listening, and we will see you next week.